afternoon, my brothers and my sisters. I haven't been here in a while in Facebook Live, so I just want to come to you from our backyard to your place, wherever you at. If you're driving, if you're home, if you're just listening, uh, wherever you at. Maybe you are at the beach today. Today is such a beautiful day. So um, I just have a, a message for you, and I will try to be here uh, daily for maybe 21 days that we could walk together and be in His Word. So I don't know how this is going to look like. Um, I don't know how um, what God is going to somehow some way deliver his word to me and be able to tell each of you a message daily so we just got to be obedient to the will of God and uh, I just want to just join you from my backyard and whatever uh, God takes me that day uh, then we will join together for these 21 days. So I hope you are excited because I am I am so joyful to join you uh, wherever you are. And if you need this word to take it to someone else, please, please um, invite someone. So as we are meditating on his word, because daily, we are to take his manna daily. We are to go and take uh, that word that is going to sustain us, that is going to give us strength as we walk by faith and not by sight, as disciples of Yeshua, of the Messiah, of Jesus. So I want you to think of this as we come to these days in... Um, Maybe you're walking through a suffering or maybe you have walked through pain. And Christianity in general, church in general, have traveled so many years after that crucifixion that many believers witness of Jesus. And when that happened years centuries have gone by in somehow some way men and i will say men just as a general statement men have drifted away from his word and what the word speak about the truth of his word so when when i became to surrender my life to the lord there were a lot of uh, I will say steps for lack of a very better um, definition or, or word or to give you this picture is that somehow some way people believe that when they do a prayer and they say a prayer they begin their walk with the Lord which is true you begin somewhere there's a beginning somewhere there's a Genesis somewhere but then they go to church they are instructed to give a prayer say this prayer accept Jesus into your heart and invite Christ into your life and they believe at that moment that they receive salvation and then from there um, they're on their own they don't know where to go or how to walk in this journey. But somehow, some way, churches just do this prayer, which is really a concern because nowhere in the New Testament, nowhere in the New Testament, speak about this superstitious prayer that you accept Jesus in your heart and you invite him into your life. And then as you repeat those, those, that statement, and suddenly um, 
you are a disciple of Christ. Nowhere in the New Testament says that prayer. And what happened is you find believers that face um, dissolution, that they face um, like a dead wall. And that is modern evangelist. Somehow, some way, that is built on sinking sand. It's not based on biblical, biblical words of God. And it's a response to the gospel. So as believers, what are we doing? What are we doing so we come together and disciple others with the Word of God and what the Word of God says? And it might be a radical, it might be a radical, radical turn that you and me have to do in our life. So with that said, with that question said into your heart, Millions, millions of souls, millions of souls are walking in that dissolution, in that misunderstanding. Discipleship, discipleship is walking by His Word in obedience, is reading His Word, letting the Word of God penetrate your life, and your generations, and you'll be able to now be a light of beacon to many. So I want you to be encouraged today that God is reminding us, if you're thirsty today, if you are a believer, that you've been going to church, that you have heard the gospel, the news, the great news of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, but somehow, some way, along the line, you were thirsty, or you are, thirst, are thirsty, or maybe you see the future generation thirsty. Whatever that now, present, and future is, I want you to bring it closer to His Word. And that's going to be our prayer today, that you will bring it closer, an invitation, that that thirstiness that you're carrying inside, it will be filled with His Word. So I'm going to ask you to go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Because that is where the Lord has uh, taken us this morning as we meditated in His Word. And Isaiah 55 is an invitation of someone that is thirsty and maybe that's you today as you're watching maybe that's you today and it says in Isaiah we're not going to read everything we're not going to read everything I just encourage you to read the whole chapter it is so important to read scriptures in context and the book of Isaiah is so rich is it's a beautiful, beautiful declaration of the Messiah. If you didn't know this, we have the four Gospels. But this one, the book of Isaiah, is called the fifth Gospel. Because it has a picture of the Messiah and the coming of the Messiah so well that if you have never taken the time to read the book of Isaiah, please read it. But today we're going to go over chapter 55, but only two verses. Two verses. And the two verses says, verse 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Verse 9. As the heavens are higher than earth, 
than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And I'm reading out of NIV. There's so many Bible translations, and trust me, I love reading all those translations. But this is the one that maybe you understand more. So that's what we picked this one today, NIV. Maybe tomorrow we pick uh, the New King James. Maybe we pick um, one in um, just uh, the Jewish Bible. We, we don't know where God will direct us. But just jump in the wagon and let's take his train let his train, his robe, his garment close you and bring you his word, his living water. So as these two verses, and I will read again, open your Bible as you're reading with me, listening to me. It is important that your eyes are reading and are looking at his word as we also say it with our own mouth. Go to Isaiah 55, look for verses 8 and 9, and I will read it again. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And I want to encourage you today that yes, the God of Israel that we serve, his ways are higher than ours and his thoughts are higher than us. But that doesn't mean that he cannot stretch his arm and come to your life and then come to your backyard and then come to where you are, where you're listening and embrace your situation. It doesn't mean that he will not guide you. It doesn't mean that his unfailing love is so way here that he cannot come near to you. That doesn't mean that. It just means that our mind needs to be transformed. Sometimes our understanding as humans will not understand the word of the Lord or his ways. But he is giving us an invitation today. If you're thirsty, come to me. And it's a beautiful thing that when we think of um, Job and Joseph, and I will mention some verses that you could go and study them. But when you, we think about them, you know that the word why, why, it was very, uh, pre, um, the, Job was asking God, why? Why am I suffering? And God, in his sovereignty, started explaining to Job, And meeting him in his understanding. But he never really answered why to Job. And if you look on verse uh, 38. Job 38. Chapter 38. Verse 36. God tells Job. Who has put wisdom in the mind? Or who has given understanding to the heart? And also, look on Job 34.10. It says, and this is now the New King James that I'm reading. Therefore, listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do wickedness and from the Almighty to commit, to commit iniquity. So he's telling here 
in two chapters with two different verses the understanding might not be from men to understand God's ways and what happened to us as humans we want to understand we want to understand his word we want to understand things that happen to us an illness a separation uh, maybe a financial difficulty maybe it's a betrayal whatever that is maybe it's a loss of a someone whatever that is we want to understand but guys reminding them to the prophet Isaiah no you cannot spend your entire life trying to understand my ways because we're not going to the the question should be god what are you teaching me through this situation through these circumstances through this rejection through this pain God, what are you teaching me? And as you come near to his word, as you're going through your situation, through your circumstances, through your storm, God gives you a word. And when you receive that word, that word brings revelation. And that word, after it brings that revelation, it sits in your heart where manna is there. Manna, bread. And you're satisfied because God gives you enough for you to walk this journey, even through your burdens. He gives you enough for you to be satisfied. That's why I said, he says in his word, come to me, you that are thirsty. Come to me, says the Lord. So today he's calling us. That if you have gone through church and you have said this prayer and you have accepted Jesus in your heart and invite him into your life, but you feel stuck, you feel that things are happening to you and you don't understand and there's this dissolution in your heart, in your walk as believer, he's saying, I am welcoming you. To come not to your own understanding, but coming to my understanding. And then there was another person I mentioned earlier, Joseph. On Genesis 41, verses 38, 37 to 38. Pharaoh, after he, um, he um, interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh. He was in a... Uh, Pharaoh was such an important person in Egypt he was the king of Egypt and he comes mind you he is a king that does not believe in God he is a king a wicked king he does not have a relationship with God with the God of Israel and he tells Pharaoh this chapter 41 verses 37 to 38 he says Pharaoh asked the officials can we find anyone else like these men so obviously filled with the spirit of God he was referring to Joseph that Joseph was filled with the spirit of God he was able to discern he was able to understand that Joseph had the spirit of God because he had interpreted his dream. Nobody could, could have done that. But God had given a gift to Joseph. And on Genesis, if you keep reading verses 39 to 41, then he gets a promotion with Pharaoh. Joseph didn't went out loud and say, oh, choose me, choose me, choose me. No. He uses his gift, 
that God has given him. And then his promotion arrives. But his promotion didn't arrive to his life just for Joseph to be the right hand of Pharaoh. That wasn't the intention. The intention was to liberate the people of God. It was for a mission. It was for an assignment. It wasn't about Joseph. And it wasn't about Pharaoh. It was about God delivering his people. Delivering his chosen people. So looking at Job and looking at Joseph, in these little few verses, we see how our thoughts, how our ways declares the Lord are not his thoughts and are not his ways. So man is trying to evangelize selling out a gospel, asking people to come to Christ just for numbers. But in reality, how are we discipling one another? How are we learning from His Word? How are we really being that instrument of God, bringing the kingdom to earth as Jesus prayed. So I hope that as you look at your life and as you meditate in what God has already assigned for you to do, that these words encourage you, that these words will bring you life, and that today, You don't think about a God that's all the way far. That you will think about a God that His arm are right, His hands are right in your situation. The Word said that He will never leave you, nor forsake you. And in, because of that truth, we are going to hold on to that truth and we're going to run with it. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. The same way those trees are moving, you see the trees moving? The wind is moving those trees. I cannot grab that wind. I cannot touch that wind. But I could see the wind. And that is God moving it. That is God moving it for us today. So let us lean not to what our own understanding, but to His understanding. And may the glory of God bring you peace, bring you shalom, and, and that He teach you that the Holy Spirit will be your teacher, that the Holy Spirit will teach you His words, and that the Holy Spirit will walk with you wherever you are so thank you so much for listening today let's see what tomorrow will bring and we just joyful to join you uh, from our backyard to wherever you are in Jesus name so thank you Lord for this time be in tune because we don't know what time tomorrow and we don't know where we're going to be But we just know that for a few minutes, we will join with you. Bye-bye. See you soon.